Hello everyone, my name is Luke and welcome back to Great Broadway Fans YouTube channel. Today I am bringing you a very special Dreamcast video. Yes, probably one of my favorite videos to make on this channel is Dreamcast videos. I've made one for NBC's upcoming Bye Bye Birdie Live, for the Little Shop of Horrors movie remake, as well as Rent Live, which is going to be coming up on Fox on January 27th, 2019. But I have to say, this is probably the most daunting one I have ever had to come up with. Why? Because it's wicked. And it's hard to believe that this October 30th will mark the 14-year anniversary of Wicked first opening on Broadway at the Gershwin Theater. And this movie adaptation, unfortunately, has been in development hell for the last... 12 to 13 years. I mean, as far back as 2004, they were going to make a movie adaptation, and they were originally planning on having Adina Menzel and Kristen Chenoweth, but that movie never got off the ground. And it wasn't until several months ago that Universal finally made the announcement that they have a not only a director and a screenwriter, but they have a set release date. And as for that last part, I think they're going to have to move release dates, because... Wicked, the movie, announced its release date before Star Wars Episode Nine just changed its release date from Memorial Day 2019 to December 20th, 2019. If you're not familiar with what happened, Colin Trevorrow was going to direct Star Wars Episode Nine, but he was fired by Kathleen Kennedy, or left due to creative differences, and J.J. Abrams was hired to direct Star Wars Episode Nine, which was going to come out Memorial Day weekend 2019. And Wicked had the entire Christmas weekend all to itself. But then they just moved Star Wars to the very same day Wicked is going to open. And that, unfortunately, is not going to work. Because Star Wars has become a bit of a Christmas tradition now for the last three years, ever since The Force Awakens then last year's Rogue One, and this year's The Last Jedi, I don't think that Universal would want to go up against something like Star Wars. It's going to be huge. So I looked at the release schedule for the entire year of 2019, and I think I come up with a perfect solution. Release the Wicked film adaptation in the month of October. There's no major movie set to be released as of late. Um, it's the month of spookiness and Halloween, our two central protagonists are two witches for Pete's sake, and the musical originally opened in October of 2003. So I think that if you release it maybe the weekend before Halloween, because Halloween falls on a Thursday in 2019, not a Friday unfortunately, but if you released it the weekend before Halloween, and therefore had the last two weeks of October going into November all to itself, I think it would be a perfect opportunity for the movie not only to do successful, but to, to thrive so that the whole world can pay attention to it. If you have Star Wars and Wicked up against each other at the box office, either both of them will crumble or one will dominate over the other. And we don't want that to happen. Now, while they haven't started production yet <clears throat> excuse me, on the movie, we do have some details. First off, we have a director, a actual set director for the movie, which is Stephen Daldry. And if you're not familiar with him, his film credits as a director include The Hours, The Reader, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, Billy Elliot, and then when Billy Elliot was turned into a stage musical, first for London's West End and then for Broadway, he directed both versions of the musical. And then he also is a director on several episodes of the Emmy-winning series The Crown on Netflix. And then he's also directing the upcoming Obi-Wan Kenobi movie, which is set for 2020 over with Disney and Lucasfilms. Also, Winnie Holtzman, who was Tony-nominated for her original book for Wicked, is going to be returning to pen the screenplay along with Stephen Schwartz. And Stephen has also confirmed that he is going to be writing at least three brand new songs for this film adaptation, and he's going to incorporate one cut song that was in the San Francisco out-of-town tryout of Wicked, but did not make it into the actual final cut of the Broadway production. And with that last talking point, 
it makes me nervous because if he's writing three new songs for the movie, the stage musical currently by itself is two and a half hours long, including a 15 minute intermission. So how on earth are you going to make the movie adaptation of Wicked, are you going to stretch it to two and a half hours by adding three new musical numbers to the movie? My guess, and this is just my guess, I think what Steven is probably going to do is cut songs from the stage version and incorporate new music into them. Um, I know that that sounds like theater blasphemy for him to cut songs out of Wicked, but let's be honest with ourselves. There are songs in that score that I think you could easily remove and either replace with dialogue scenes or replace with new material. Um, I think that Dear Old Shiz is only in existence in the show to, for a scene transition. Both Sentimental Man and Wonderful are two solos sung by the wizard that really don't progress anything forward. Um... And the song Wicked Witch of the East, which is not on the cast recording, is simply a scene set to music. So I don't know what he'll do with the score. I will keep you posted, but that's my initial reaction to that statement of incorporating both new music and one cut song. Now, this is interesting, but back in April of this year, there was a rumor that came out of Universal that Nicole Scher Singer had been approached to potentially play Elphaba for the movie adaptation of Wicked. And if you're not familiar with Nicole Scher Singer, she's a former Pussycat doll. She played Maureen in the Rent Hollywood Bowl production back in 2010. She was Grizabella in Cats for the West End. And then she also was in that god awful um, TV movie remake of Dirty Dancing. But nothing was confirmed. It was just a rumor that she was in talks to play Alphaba. But in the April, May, June, July, August, September, October, in the seven months since that rumor, nothing's been confirmed. And that leads me into my next talking point, is the biggest problem facing the Wicked movie is going to be the casting. Because, let's be honest with ourselves, the roles of Alphaba and Glinda need to be played by women who are singers first and then actresses second. Most modern day movie musicals try to incorporate performers who are actors first and then singers second. And while sometimes that means that they're better, they're better actors than they are singers, and sometimes that's also not a disrespect to the singing but a higher respect to the acting, there have been cases recently of people being disappointed in certain Hollywood talent that's been front and center in a movie musical when their vocal chops just can't hold up. La La Land and Beauty and the Beast are two prime examples. People gave Emma Stone and Emma Watson both crap for their weak vocals. And while I thought that Emma Watson vocals were perfect for the role of her incarnation of Belle, and Emma Stone gave a more gritty, realistic performance uh, in her vocals, I do see the argument. There's not enough trained singers in Hollywood for movie musicals, and therefore you have to outstretch to Broadway talent for your movie musicals. But then that's a double-edged sword, because if you put too much unknown theater talent front and center in a movie... Worldwide audiences don't know who these performers are. Not every musical is a Phantom of the Opera or a Wicked or a Hamilton. <coughs> Excuse me. So, here's what I think. I think that Wicked, when it comes to its casting, has three potential scenarios on how to cast this movie. Because I've been paying attention to some modern movie musicals on how they cast their films. And this is what I was able to come up with. Scenario number one. You go with A-list movie stars for the leading characters, and if you have any smaller or supporting roles, you fill it in with either lesser-known movie talent or TV talent, or you go with Broadway talent. Um, and while this has worked in movie musicals like Chicago and Les Miserables and Beauty and the Beast, there, were, there are examples of times when that does not work, such as um, with Evita and Sweeney Todd and Rock of Ages, where you have Hollywood talent front and center, 
but therefore you sacrifice the integrity of the musical, and therefore you have talent that can't sing the roles that they're written to play, which is a problem. Number two is you can mix have an even balance of both Hollywood and Broadway talent in the same movie. Um, this worked brilliantly with Into the Woods. I think that that was a prime example of a movie musical where you had Hollywood A-list talent like Meryl Streep and Anna Kendrick and Emily Blunt and Chris Pine rubbing shoulders with theater talent like James Corden and Daniel Huddleston and Lilla Crawford, Mackenzie Mozzie, Billy Magnuson. And even the last five years movie featured a Hollywood actress with Anna Kendrick and then a Broadway star with Jeremy Jordan. So you could go the sort of 50-50 balance, which I think would be the best case scenario to do. Now the third one is the trickiest because you have to stick the landing properly with the casting. But if you go with a complete unknown fresh face brand new talent or even a theater actress or actor front and center, and then you fill in the supporting roles with Hollywood talent, that's one way to do it. Case in point, both the film adaptation and the NBC versions of Hairspray featured this. Um, also the Dreamgirls movie. Um, even though Jennifer Hudson clearly had her fans from American Idol, she was a lesser known talent front and center in a movie musical. Also the Jersey Boys film adaptation. Uh, they brought back the, the lead actor who won the Tony for playing Frankie Valli in the Broadway production to then do it on film. So how do I think that Wicked should go about the casting with all these scenarios from previous movie musicals? I think because the vocals are so demanding for the role of Elphaba, more Elphaba than Glinda essentially. I mean Glinda has to be able to hit some high soprano notes in certain songs, but Elphaba really has the three biggest songs in the whole show. She has The Wizard and I, Defying Gravity, and No Good Deed, um, which are the three beltiest songs in the whole show, and probably some of the most vocally intense music that's ever been written for a Broadway stage. If I had to compare any other Broadway show's score in terms of vocal, vocally taxing, I would pick Andrew Lloyd Webber's Evita. It's written to be played by a woman who needs to be able to hit all those high notes. And when they made the movie adaptation with Madonna, she simply couldn't do it. Um, Patti Lapone and Elaine Page are two of the best Evitas, and Elena Roger, uh, three of the best Evitas that have ever performed the part. And when they cast Elphaba on Broadway, they get at women who can sing the vocals more over than they are named talents. So here's what I'm saying. I think this is a golden opportunity to either cast a Broadway star who can handle the role vocally and then fill out the rest of the, of the movie with Hollywood talent. Or you can find a Hollywood actress who can sing the role. That's what's most important, is you need to be able to hit the notes and actually sing the material as written. I don't want them to butcher or alter the score for an actress who can't sing it to its full extent. So here's who I've, I have come up with for the role of Elphaba. My number one draft pick is Cynthia Erivo. I think hot after her Tony win uh, for her Broadway debut as Celie in the revival of The Color Purple, and also her Grammy win uh, for being the lead vocalist on the cast recording, she's ripe for the picking to be to become to transition into movies. She's already attached to play Harriet Tubman in a biopic about the life of Harriet Tubman. I think Oprah's producing the movie. But I think that if you're going to make a movie musical version of Wicked and you want to go with a Broadway star who can handle the role, Cynthia Riva would be perfect. You would be able to introduce her to the world who's not already familiar with her and be able to vocally handle the part. Now, if you want to go with a Hollywood actress who I think who could definitely sing the role, look no further than Anna Kendrick. She made her Broadway debut um, in High Society when she was 12. She was fantastic in the Pitch Perfect series. And then, of course, both Cinderella and Kathy in the Into the Woods and the last five years film adaptations. And with Pitch Perfect 3 being the final movie in their franchise coming out this December, she has a full open availability to play Alphaba in the film adaptation of Wicked. Now, she could be a little bit on the short side in terms of stature, but I think that she can make up for that with her vocal chops and her acting. She's a fantastic, gifted performer. 
And because I have to go there, my third choice would be Leah Michelle. Even though I could not stand her performance as Rachel in the Glee series, she was my least favorite character because I felt she was just way too over the top and really unlikable as a character, I cannot deny that Leah Michelle has a fantastic voice when it's not auto-tuned. I've heard her voice when it's sung in live performances, and she has a beautiful voice. She looks like Adina Menzel. Everybody's been dreamcasting her in this part for years, so why not we make it happen? And lastly, these last two choices are sort of wild cards, but Janelle Monet, who started out as a pop singer and now has become uh, working her way into Hollywood in, in acting, would be fantastic. And also Megan Hilty. She's voiced how much she wants to come back and do Wicked again on Broadway, but since she's already played Glinda, and I think if you watch her in on Smash, her belt is so rich and strong that she would make a fantastic Elphaba. She has matured, I think, into the role of Elphaba. She had a wonderful four-year run as Glinda, both on Broadway and in the Los Angeles production, that I think she'd make a fantastic return to Wicked as Elphaba. Next up, Glinda. This is a role that I think you could either, once again, you could cast a Hollywood actress or a Broadway actress. If you want to cast two Broadway actresses as both Elphaba and Glinda, that's wonderful. Then fill out the rest of the roles, fill out the other roles with Hollywood talent. Because you're going to need um, some reasons for non-theater fans to come and see the movie. And while the world will definitely be anticipating the film adaptation of Wicked, you need to get the non-theater community to come see the movie. So my number one pick for the role of Glinda, and I think she would be perfect opposite Anna Kendrick, is Dove Cameron. I love Dove Cameron. I thought she was fantastic on her little uh, Liv and Maddie TV show when she played her own set of identical twins. I thought that that was charming. And while Descendants was boring, I thought, I loved her as Amber Von Tussle in Hairspray Live. I thought she was fantastic. And once again, partnered up with Kristen Chenoweth uh, playing her daughter um, in Hairspray. I would love to see her play that part. Now, another actress that I would love to see opposite Anna Kendrick, specifically because it would be a Pitch Perfect reunion, is Brittany Snow. Once again, she also played Amber in the film adaptation of Hairspray, and with Pitch Perfect as a series coming to an end, and Brittany Snow having such a beautiful, gorgeous voice, I would love to see her play Glenda. Um, I think it would be really fantastic. A uh, little... If, if you cast uh, Anna Kendrick or maybe even Leah Michelle opposite Britney Snow, I'd love to see the chemistry between those two. I think that they would make a great pair. My third choice is Lily James. Now, if you're not familiar with her, she was Cinderella in the live-action Disney remake of that movie, and she was also in Downton Abbey uh, for uh, seasons three through five, I think. And then she was also in Baby Driver, which I saw earlier this summer, and it was a fantastic movie. I highly recommend that you go see Baby Driver if you haven't already watched it. But I've actually heard her singing voice, and it's very, very good. I think she's someone who I would consider an actress first and a singer second, but with Glinda, you can get away with having that. Because Glinda, I think, is, an, is a character that requires more of an arc with her character, and also... Alphaba's the stronger vocalist, but Glinda's the stronger actress of the two characters. My fourth and fifth choice, these are two wild cards, but Laura Osnes and Betsy Wolf. Talk about two Broadway actresses that even though they couldn't play them on Broadway because they're too famous, would make fantastic Glindas on film. Laura Osnes is the literal incarnation of a Disney princess. I think she's so fantastic. She's ageless. She still looks like she's in her early 20s. And Betsy Wolf is one of my favorite actresses of all time. I got to meet her in person, and she is such a lovely human being. And um, with her, uh, she's currently on Broadway in Waitress, um, but once she leaves that production, if slash when she leaves the production, I think she would be perfect to play Glinda on film. She's got the vocal chops, the Broadway pedigree, and the look to play Glinda. Now, as for our Fiero, I've got, once again, three top choices and two wild cards. My number one draft pick is Zac Efron. I think he is 
trying so hard to hold on to his movie star status. He's made a lot of bad movies in his career, but he's also still fondly remembered for his role in the High School Musical franchise and his other small speckles of good roles. And he's also going to be in the upcoming Hugh Jackman uh, P.T. Barnum movie musical, The Greatest Showman on Earth, set for this Christmas. And I'm really interested to see how his performance pans out. I'd love to see him play Fierro. I think he's the right look, the right age, and he's got the good voice for it. My second pick is Darren Criss. Um, I would love to see, because Darren Criss is also a little bit on the shorter side, Anna Kendrick, Dove Cameron, and Darren Criss as our three leading trio would be fantastic on film. Darren, I think, is one of those actors that just needs the right role in a movie to propel him up another level. He's been fantastic on TV, he's done fantastic on Broadway, and he's even got his own album out and he tours across the world and does his music. But I would love to see him cut his teeth on a really good, juicy role, and Fierro would be perfect for him. Now my uh, third choice for the role of Fierro would be Jonathan Groff. Once again, Broadway pedigree from Spring Awakening, transitioned into television with uh, Glee and other TV shows that he's been a part of, but mostly he is most iconically remembered as voicing Kristoff in Frozen. And if that proved anything, Jonathan Groff has a fantastic voice, and he was criminally underused in that movie, I think. Um, I hope he does, I hope he has more to do with in the sequel, but I love Jonathan Groff's voice, and I think he would make a fantastic Fierro. And my last two wildcard picks would be Nick Jonas. I think that of the three Jonas brothers, I think Nick has definitely gotten the most longevity out of being of the, of the trio of Jonas Brothers with his film and television career, but he still has the vocal chops, I think, to handle the part. And then also Jeremy Jordan. I adore this man. He's probably one of my favorite Broadway actors from Bonnie and Clyde to Newsies to the last five years movie. He's been on Supergirl, which I'm a huge fan of, and I want him to return to Broadway in another musical, but he'd be even more fantastic, I think, if he got cast as Fierro in this film adaptation of Wicked. So next up, we have Madame Morrible. This was the most fun role to cast. I came up with a huge list of actresses and had to couple it down to just five. And I'll list my honorable mentions at the very end of the video. Um, but my number one draft pick for the role of Madame Morrible is Jessica Lange. I think she would be fantastic. After seeing her in Feud, Betty and Joan, as she played Joan Crawford, what a tour de force performance. So fantastic. And, I mean, huge movie star with a huge long list of, of films under her belt. What would be more delicious than having her come on to be in the movie adaptation of Wicked? Madame Morrible is not a singing-heavy role, so you can cast an actress of of huge stature that doesn't necessarily need to be a quote-unquote trained singer. It's more of an acting performance than it is a singing performance when it comes to Madame Marble's character. But speaking of musical talent, how about Bette Midler as Madame Marble, fresh off of her Tony win for Dolly Levi, and also two of my favorite Bette Midler performances are Winifred, in Hocus Pocus and Mama Rose in the TV movie version of Gypsy. Now that Bette Midler's leaving the production in January, I would love to see her play Madame Morrible in a Wicked movie. My third choice is Meryl Streep. Three-time Oscar winner Meryl Streep. I think after seeing her in Into the Woods, um, I mean Mamma Mia was a great movie musical for being a Mamma Mia film adaptation, but seeing her as the witch in Into the Woods just made me want to see her in more movie musicals. I'd love to see her play Norma Desmond in Sunset Boulevard. I'd love to see her play Dolly Levi in Hello, Dolly. But Madame Morrible would be the right, once again, having two theater talent actresses as your leading ladies and then filling it in with Hollywood talent for the supporting roles is the right move, I think, creatively when it comes to the casting. And what would be better than Meryl Streep playing Madame Morrible? Um, my fourth choice and fifth choice, once again, are more on the wild card side. But Emma Thompson, 
um, beautiful performance in Beauty and the Beast, um, but also I loved her Mrs. Lovett in the New York City Philharmonic production of Sweeney Todd, and of course P.L. Travers in Saving Mr. Banks. If you've not seen that movie, please go watch it. That movie's fantastic as well. And then Glenn Close, who just finished her uh, latest stint of running um, Sunset Boulevard on Broadway as Norma Desmond, even though she's been in talks to play Norma Desmond in a film adaptation of Sunset, which I'm still hoping actually gets made, I'd love to see her play Madame Morrible. Think Norma Desmond and Cruella de Vil mixed together with Glenn Close's performances. That would be fantastic. And then next up, The Wizard. I've got three choices for The Wizard, and I think that all of them are home run winners. Number one is Martin Short. I think that with a strong comedian in this role, it would be fantastic. I would love to see him cut his teeth with the with the scenes, with um with Glinda and Elphaba in the throne room and everything in the wizard's chamber. And if they keep the wizard's songs in the movie, which I would love to see them at least keep Wonderful. Sentimental Man, I could take it or leave it, but Wonderful is a good song. Um, I, think it's, I think it's a charming song, and I think that Martin Short could do a great job with it. My number two choice is Victor Garber. Everything that man touches turns to gold. I have adored that man for years. Um, Rodgers and Hammerstein's Cinderella on TV when he played the king, and when he was um, Mayor Shin in The Music Man. Victor Garber does nothing but good work, and I would love to see him play the wizard. And my third choice, because I've got Beauty and the Beast on the brain, Kevin Klein. Talk about the heart and the acting performance that would be perfect, right up his alley, for an actor like Kevin Klein. Now, my last two characters, Nessa Rose and Bach, I'm lumping together, but I've got my two, I've got two choices for each of them. I've got Haley Steinfeld and Elle Fanning for Nessa Rose, which, come on, either one of them would be perfect. Because you need someone who's younger than Elphaba, but sassier and just a little, and can get that nastier edge to the character just a little bit more than Elphaba traditionally is as a character. And then there's Bach, um, which would be perfect for either Ben Platt or Andrew Keenan Bolger. I just think that that would be fantastic. So what do you all think? What do you think of my Dreamcast suggestions for the Wicked movie? Be sure to leave your own Dreamcast suggestions down below in the comment section. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you are not already subscribed. You can follow me on social media. My links to Instagram and Twitter are in the description. Click the bell icon for notifications when I post content. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.